Hi, I'm James Muir, and this is a screencast for Make More Noise. We had a question come in on our YouTube channel over the weekend, uh, which specifically asked how to copy uh, plug-in settings around the mixer. So we're going to have a quick run through some different options for doing that. As this is logic, there's always 47 different ways of doing everything. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at my favourites. Uh, like most of these things, we've all got our own way of working, so I'm sure other people do it different ways. Uh, but these all work, and uh, I'll run you through them now. So, as usual, we'll have a quick look at where we are to start with. We've got a Logic EVP88 electric piano plug-in loaded up on a channel strip. Um, just going to do the Alt Bypass trick so you can hear that. And then to that, we've added a clip distortion, which is one of Logic's built-in plugins. Uh, we've got an Abbey Road third-party plugin equaliser. We've got the FET compressor from SoftTube, which is a sort of 1176 style emulation. And then finally, again, a Logic plugin delay designer. And what we've gone through uh, and tweaked all of those to get the kind of sound we're looking for. And uh, obviously, we could go through, create a new channel, recreate all of those settings. But that's going to take five minutes like it did to do the first time round. So what's a quick and easy way of transferring those settings across to a new channel? Let me just shut down these plugin interfaces. And then we can open up the mixer because it's a bit easier to see in the mixer. And you'll see at the top of the channel strip here, you've uh, if you've got a plugin loaded, it'll tell you what the name of it is. So EVP88 there. And if there's no plugin loaded on this instrument 2 track, we've just got a uh, rectangular box that says setting. So if we click and hold there, we get a drop down menu, which says next channel strip setting, copy channel, paste channel, reset channel, save as. So from our first channel, the one that we want to copy, we select hold down. And then we come down the drop down menu to where it says copy channel strip setting. It's got the key command here to the right as usual. Copy, and then we can go to our blank channel, our channel with nothing on it, and click and hold again. And now we have an option to paste channel strip setting. Third channel, once you've got it into the copy, you can just keep pasting it all the way along. So uh, theoretically, now we should have three channels in our arrange page which sound exactly the same. So, first channel. Second channel. And finally the third channel. Now you should be able to hear all three of those channels. You can see visually I've got the same four plugins on them and the same virtual instrument and hopefully they sounded roughly the same as well. So that's the quickest, most obvious way of copying a channel strip setting around. Uh, while we're having a quick chat about what's available in that drop down menu, let's have a quick look at some of the other options. So, if you can copy and paste, I suppose the next most important one is to reset the channel strip setting, which takes you back to a blank channel strip. Reset the channel strip setting takes you back to a blank channel strip. And then in the same menu, we've also got the option to save a channel strip setting. Now, this is particularly useful if you're working on an album, so you want a coherent sound across a, a whole group of different songs, and you've spent hours and hours EQing up your drum kit in the first song, compression settings. You can then save a channel strip setting as, which opens the normal save dialog box, new folder down here at the bottom. So I'd normally create a new folder and call it um, our new band, so and so, give it a name, and then you can save that as Joe's vocal sound, Trevor's guitars, kick drum, snare drum, backing vocals, whatever it is. And then when you load up the next song in the project you want to work through, so you mix track one and then load up track two, you can just copy those channel strip settings straight onto the new channels and use those as a starting point. I mean, I think even between songs, you're going to find you want to tweak things subtly. Uh, not every song's going to want to sound exactly the same, but it's a good starting place to give you a nice coherent feel to a whole album's worth of mixing. Or if, like me, you do something on a fairly regular basis, like I do these voiceovers for our screencasts, you'll see that I've got uh, some settings of my own saved up here. Uh, which don't show because I'm logged in as a different user. If I was logged in on my normal user account on this Mac here, you'd see that I'd have a setting in here which is called James's VoiceOver. And because basically I'm using the same mic every time, I'm saying roughly the same kind of things in the tutorials, I've just got a setting with a compressor, my EQ settings. And again, I use that as a starting point. I tweak it for the different tutorials we do because some days I talk a little bit more quietly or got a bit of a sore throat or whatever but again it's a good starting point and rather than recreating the sound from scratch each time it gives you somewhere to start 
Uh, so I'm going to cut away now and I'll come back and show you another couple of neat little tricks for dealing with plugins in the mixer window. Uh, but I just need to open up another app. Bear with me a second. OK, so the next thing to have a think about is some neat little key commands for moving around and copying plugins. Uh, but we just need to have a quick discussion about the naming scheme for these. Uh, so up on the screen, we've got a picture here in preview of the new style Apple keyboards, the ones that look like this. And you'll see down here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, we've got control, option and command. Whereas if you bring up an older style Apple keyboard, you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, we've got control, but it's abbreviated CTRL. Um, then we've got alt and then we've got what most people tend to call the Apple key. They're exactly the same commands as each other, and unfortunately, the names for them tend to get used interchangeably. So quite often you'll hear people say, oh, you can control click it or option click it or command click it. Or alternatively, they might say you control click it, alt click it or Apple click it. They're all the same thing. It works exactly the same way. Um, I've got an older style Apple keyboard in front of me, so I tend to stick with the naming scheme because I look down when I'm talking of saying, Apple or Alt or Control, but I say if you've got a newer style keyboard, that literally just means exactly the same thing. So instead of Apple, I would say Command. Instead of uh, saying Alt, I would say Option. Uh, you can see it just about, I think it says Alt above it on the keyboard there. I'm not sure because I can't quite zoom in far enough and Control stays the same. So let, one more time just to be super clear, if I say Apple um, and you've got a newer keyboard, that equates to being Command. And if I say alt, it equates to being option. I'm probably going to always end up defaulting to these names on the original style keyboard because that's what I'm looking at when I'm talking to you. So let me just quit preview and bring logic back to the front. Uh, OK, so the next thing to say is you can shift plugins around even when they're in the window. So if you decided that the compressor was dulling down the sound, which is quite a common compressor, uh, com let me say that again in English. It's quite a common effect of compression is you lose a little bit of top end. You might decide you want to have the equalizer after the compressor, whereas at the moment it's before it. So if you hold down the Apple key and you just drag, you can move the plugins around in order. So now I can move the compressor down one and I can move the EQ down one and then I can put the compressor before the equalizer. Or if I decided that I wanted the delay to have the distortion after it, I can take the clip distortion. And again, I'm holding down the Apple key and I can drop that at the bottom. So you can reorder plugins in a channel strip by just holding down the Apple key or the command key, as we just discussed. And you can move them around so they're in any order you like. Now, if you again have uh, got a sound up and running in a mix that you're really happy with and you just want to move that across very quickly to the next channel strip along, you can hold down the Apple key and you can move a plugin onto the next channel strip or the third one or to the master bus. Let's just put that back where we found it. And that was moving it, holding down the Apple key. If you hold down the Apple key and the Alt key at the same time, instead of moving, it'll make a copy. So we can effectively copy across that whole channel strip a piece at a time rather than doing the uh, drop down menu way we showed earlier. And we'll have exactly the same setting, as you can see there on the screen, on both our channel strips. And as I said, that's holding down the Apple key and the Alt key while you're dragging. So again, that's a nice, quick, easy way of doing it straight in the mixer window without having to go into the menu. So there's another couple of useful key commands for moving around or uh, changing the order of or copying plugin settings in the mixer window. Hope that's all been useful. I've been James Muir and this has been a screencast for Make More Noise. Thanks for watching.